Hey, it's Joel, and I like resin 3D printing? You're in 3D Printing Nerd Studios, proudly powered by PCBWay, 8% off link in the description. You know what to do. And this is the Reflex 2 from Hay Gears, an upgrade from the Reflex, which you've seen before on the show. And I'm gonna get into new features. I'm gonna get into the materials that I printed with it and why I think at this point in time, I like resin 3D printing. Finally. In order to properly discuss this, I need to open it up so you can take a look inside at the 230 by 144 by 230 build volume. At the bottom, it's got a 10.7 inch 6K Amber Screen Pro. The base is die casted metal and the scraper that they've implemented is metal and heated. Now before when the Reflex was out, it didn't have the scraper. The scraper is a welcome addition because now that it's metal and it can be heated, it provides uniform heat to the resin. So as it goes back and forth, that resin can be heated to the proper temperature, giving you better prints. And next to it, with that fantastic blue light, is the PRM2. The PRM is the pulse releasing module, and the two is that one because it's now upgraded from the original PRM. Using the PRM2, you can now print columns that are less than a millimeter in diameter more consistently. The PRM2 also allows for better surface quality when printing thin walled structures. It is a thing that has a lifespan and that lifespan is two times the original lifespan of the PRM. The PRM2 can go twice as long. Nice. The PRM2 reduces the peel force. That allows for fewer supports. That's gonna shorten your post-processing time. It's also gonna help maintain that smooth surface finish. And in the end, it's gonna result in stronger parts. And finally, the PRM2 is quieter than the original. Thank goodness. Keep it down. Some of the features in the machine are actually kind of really cool. The 161 OptiZone light engine, it gives precise zone dimming with almost no light in dark areas and gives an extremely high contrast. That is essential when doing high quality resin 3D printing. That light engine also produces less heat in the Reflex 2. Less heat means less heat accumulation and less heat that you have to mitigate and get out of the system. Adaptive Z-axis compensation means cleaner supports with less deformation and higher precision with complex structures. The Amber Screen Pro will last 12 and a half times longer than the original in the Reflex. Now that you've heard about the machine, let's talk about the materials I used in printing with it. Let's talk about PAT10. It has a high transparency after post-processing and it's very easy to sand. It's resistant to cracking from accidental drops, it's past UV thermal aging, and it doesn't yellow easily. With the PAT-10, I thought it might be fun to print some Halloween flavored things. And so here I've got a ghosty, and then we can't forget about our furry friends. So I've got some little pupper ghosties, and I've got some kitty cat ghosties. These were all printed in PAT-10, these were not post-processed because that, that process involves multiple grits of sanding and then a clear acrylic spray or an automotive spray to, to keep the clarity. I did start sanding the Ghost and the surface quality is amazing. Sanding this down produces something that's extremely smooth. It does cloud it up a little bit because I only got to 400 grit. But if you go up to 800, 1,000, 1,200, 2,000, and then you spray it, you're going to get some insane results with this material. It feels good and the clarity is there. I just haven't had the chance to, to grit up to get it, but it still looks cool when you put a light through it or when smoke goes through it, or you know, when you put some fire through it. How about some PAU-20? This material has polycarbonate-like performance. It's resistant to breakage during use. It's very high precision and dimensionally accurate, and it has passed UV and humidity aging tests. In the PAU-20, uh, I did print these brackets first because it's polycarbonate-like, and we needed some things to hold some tools up outside and this is passing the UV and the humidity testing, and it's, it's polycarbonate-like. So I can attach this to a post outside and put a rake or a hoe or a hula hoe. 
uh, I can do that, but also I can mount that here in the studio and and just not worry about it because I mean it's 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 polycarbonate esque, so it's not going to break easy. The, the surface quality on the prints is astounding. This has not been post processed on this side. It is incredibly smooth. The layering is perfect, and I'm really happy with this material's performance, which is why I printed something for the machine. Figures provided these models to print in PAU20, that this PC-like material, and it goes on either side of the vat. And this, when the scraper goes back and forth, keeps any splash from happening. I mean, that, that scraper can be energetic, and if you have a not very viscous material, it can splash around, and this will sort of mitigate that. Plus, it mounts on the side over there, and you can actually put the build plate on there. And so after a print, what I would do is move the platform all the way to the top, disengage it, and then put it on the side just to let any of that extra material drain down back into the vat. These look like this because they were in use, but one of the things I wanna point out is the accuracy. So this and this printed separately, each with supports, and then there's just this really tiny little hole that it goes into, and then this slots into place, and that holds it, because when it's on the system, it's like this, and so this way it doesn't rotate, it stays in, and I just thought that was a fascinating design choice, and, and really, these are, these are great additions for this machine. It's always cool whether you're in FFF land or resin land, if you can 3D print things using the material for the machine itself. Uh, I love this application. I had to throw some mini joules on that build plate because who can't do with some solid polycarbonate-esque mini joules? And these are for test purposes because who says we can't have long lasting prints outside that are dimensionally accurate? And uh, I think, these are going to be put to some heat tests to see how well they perform. I have some ABS mini joules and I do have some polycarbonate mini joules, the ABS on the Bamboo H2S and the polycarbonate mini joules on the Prusa HT90 with a 90 degree chamber. So we're gonna see how well this works with those. And if you'd like to see that, definitely make sure you're following. Finally tonight, it is Halloween, so why not build an incredible looking ghoulish cup? And I did something really fun. My buddy Shane is putting together some tutorials in Nomad Sculpt, and so I put it on the iPad, and he taught me how to Boolean out cylinders for the eyes, because originally this was solid all the way through, but I wanted the eyes to be able to let some smoke out or perhaps put some fire in here to make it extra evil. And he showed me how to do that. And so uh, I'm gonna be doing more Nomad Sculpt things on the channel. And one of the reasons why I think I really like resin now is because the things that I can create in Nomad Sculpt, I can reproduce hyper accurately in really cool materials on this machine. It's wonderful because what I'm about to show you blew my mind. Let's talk about PAH270. It is an ultra heat resistant material. The HDT on this is greater than 270 degrees Celsius. It also is highly rigid. The flexural modulus is over 7200 MPA and it has excellent wear resistance and structural stability. This material almost feels like a unicorn material because it's gonna do everything that I've ever wanted. And it's gonna be highly, highly resistant to heat. And it's really stiff, that flexural modulus over 7,200 MPA. And it feels like porcelain. It feels like ceramics. It's it's incredible, the feeling of this mini joel that I made. And if that PC-like PAU20 mini joel is gonna be able to withstand the heat, this one is just gonna laugh at it. It's just gonna laugh at it. The feeling on this is unreal. And the sandability on it is incredible. Like there were some support zits on mini joel's tuckus and I was able to sand those away in seconds. The feeling on this mini Joel is, is unreal. I, w I wish you could feel it through the screen because it's so, so cool. It's not the cheapest material out there. Like this is an engineering grade material, but when you can print things on it that are nearly invincible, 
How cool is that? It's really cool that in this day and age, we're able to have a 3D printer that can produce these sorts of materials at home. You can create incredible tooling. You can create incredible miniatures. You can create crystal clear things with a little bit of work. You can create mounts and jigs. You can create parts for your 3D printer. You can create something a little evil. So yeah, I think at this point, I think I can proudly say, I like resin 3D printing, and I can't wait to see where this goes, not just with the models that I have found, but with the stuff that I get to design myself in Nomad Sculpt, and I can't wait to show you. Well, listen, thanks for making this far, because if you did, you're awesome. Don't forget to tell each other more, fight for cause you believe in, resin print all the things, and as always, high five.